launching the boat, well I guess before launching the boat, we had to move all of our lumber away from the boat yard. Sort of like a toss up, it was so nice, so awesome to launch the boat, but it was also a little bit hard to give up our workspace. And um, we were able to store so much stuff there, so much material, so many tools. So now we have to re-figure it out. And so the lumber that we have left, believe it or not, is still quite extensive. So we have some here at my parents, we have some in the truck, we have some in the storage unit, and we have some on the boat. But this is just what we have at my parents' house, and this is the offcuts from our planking stock that we did with Jim on his sawmill up in Washington. And this is what we sort of had been going through uh, to finish bottom planking and it went through our sheathing and pretty much what we have left now are just western red cedar. So that will be interior stuff. And then black locust, which we got from a local guy in milling. Um, and that went into pretty much just bulwark so far, but it's gonna be a lot of our interior stuff. And then <laughs> this redwood is from my parents' old hot tub, and it doesn't look like much, but the minute you cut into it, it is bright red. It's just absolutely gorgeous. And then these are more from that 1940s schoolhouse. Uh, rafters but these pieces have little bits of rot in them as well as the uh, um, redwood has little bits of rot just in the end like where the straps were so it's pretty soft so we've kind of isolated this stuff. Our main task today is not only to see what kind of lumber we still have but also to uh, stick and stack it because the rainy season has hit us. Episode 39, I'm trying to crank out some episodes, catch us up to real time while I have this awesome work office set up. And Garrett's pretty excited. He's got a little bit of a workshop. Got his chop saw, our table saws now in here. And then yesterday, he got this awesome bandsaw, so he's pretty excited. Yeah, anyway, let's 
coming together. Sweet. It's all the like days of just like yeah mental uh, lightning storms are finally <laughs> coming together and now i can actually start building it and putting it in now that i've tried to think about like every little every possible piece. yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah i feel like i can just start kind of busting ass and building shit yeah our engine mounts came in, by the way. They're at my parents. Oh, nice. Seat. Yeah. Sweet. Hell yeah. I'm gonna take one of the off cuts from one of these and do this little bit. That'll bring us down to, back to this floor. At this floor is where it'll step up to make room for the, uh, the drive, drive line. line. Yeah. Feels really cool to have a floor in the boat. Yeah. Like the beginnings of one. What say you about... No, I don't want to start building another boat. I'm trying to figure out how to fit everything into the boat. Like, you know, head, galley, salon, blah, 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 all the things you need. Garrett and I have been together since we were 15. But oddly enough, we're both terrible at commitment, except to each other, that is. Deciding on the layout of the interior and sticking to it has felt near impossible. George Bueller has a simple layout in his plans, but we'd love to fit extra bunks for guests or crew. So taking measurements and flip-flopping ideas is a daily occurrence. As Garrett paces, he's baffled as to how hard this aspect of the build is. Why not just Stick a pooper in the corner and then just have a curtain. I'd rather have a door. If it's there in the corner. Now you, you've always it, been like, I don't care about having a door. I don't care about having well, a room for a head. You've always said that. Well, if it's, like, if, it's here, it. if it's here, if it's here. Well, that's the thing. But if it were up there. there enough space for a room and a door unless I come out with it into the companionway space mm -hmm. which is doable and I can do it but it's gonna be kind of funky and coming along the companionway is not enough room for a room. I guess we can play around with it. The idea. Making decisions is hard. Close up on the thinking. Time to let these be tomorrow's problems. It is just past 10 o'clock. So now Garrett can start using the saw. Hey, get your piece cut? Yep. Cut yourself? Then there's a little step down into the main salon. So what's the what's the plan to uh, cover the plywood? Um, well, eventually, once everything's fastened down, and uh, once we get start getting our interior in, I can figure out where I can cut all the floorboards. So we're gonna have the hatches to get to the bilge. Yeah, so we're gonna have as many kind of like access um, hatches as possible into the bilge. So I figure out where those are and I can cut all those out. And then um, I'm going to glue and screw um, some sort of really nice wood 
over top of all of this eventually. I don't really know what I'm going to use yet. I was kind of thinking black locust since it's really a nice durable hardwood. Um, but part of me kind of wants to reserve the locust for, um, you know, all our kind of on deck structural stuff like uh, dead eyes, belaying pins, cleats, gaff jaws, clappers, hounds, whatever, you know, all, it's, all that kind of stuff where we could really use this super strong burly wood. So with the cabin sole, I might just use nice fur, this nice straight grain fur and glue it down. We'll see. Everything's going to be built out of plywood and uh, so everything that is plywood will be covered in wood, real wood. Um, and like, uh, like the cabin ceiling. Yeah. And the majority of it, we're going to use the, uh, that reclaim Western red cedar. Yeah. Oh, that's going to be so pretty. It's going to be really nice. Red Aviva is one big work in progress. Feeling a bit scatterbrained on all the projects, we're giving our noggins a little break on the interior and switch gears back to the engine. Um, it's a Hurt brand. It's, uh, it's got a four hole um, uh, on the, the mounting, the top or whatever. Hang on, I have to get this on camera. <laughs> <laughs> what? Rolf needs to hear this. What, it, what did you just say? I said I should have just listened to Rolf from the beginning. I should always just listen to Rolf from the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> he knows what the hell he's talking about when it comes to this kind of stuff. The biggest thing is balancing. Mm -hmm. That's the biggest thing on any kind of drive line mm -hmm. is you want to have it balanced properly. Mm -hmm. And that's the one thing that a good drive line company will do for you mm -hmm. is they'll, they'll, they'll properly balance mm -hmm. it because the last thing you want is to have a drive line that's out of balance. And if yeah. it's out of balance, you'll have a vibration going through your boat and you'll just it'll drive you crazy. Yeah. The hard part for me is I, I found all the parts that I can buy to make my own uh, setup, but I haven't been able to find on any of them like what the real ratings are other than light duty, medium duty, and heavy duty. And go heavy duty. That's that's what I figure. And, and I'm thinking like, heavy to medium. Well, for I think for I'd your definitely for your do deal, heavy duty. For your deal, I I would go medium. Because I want it to heavy be duty, like ten times stronger than. Yeah, but if you're in heavy duty, you're gonna end up. You're not gonna find. Something small enough uh -huh. is my thinking. Uh -huh. you, when your motor is pushing what, 90 horsepower? It's only 52 horsepower. Okay, 52 horsepower. Mm -hmm. You're pushing a propeller that's that big. Uh, I mean like 18 inches. Okay. Uh -huh. This this thing is pushing this tire. Mm -hmm. This thing's got 70 horsepower. Yeah. So do the math. Bigger tire. Yeah. Rubber, uh -huh. not going through water. Yeah. Right? This is more than enough to push this. Mm -hmm. And if you if you've got a propeller that's this big mm -hmm. with a shaft that's this big, mm -hmm. that should be more than enough in a motor that's that big. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's not rocket science. Yeah, totally. You know, we're not building the space shuttle here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right? Definitely. I mean definitely. You're, you're and if you go my fear is if you go heavy duty, you're gonna end up with you <laughs> joint that's this big. <laughs> that you could throw over a board and use as an anchor. Yeah. You know, that, that... Would you say also going too heavy would sort of bog down the engine even a little bit? That it would take a lot of power to... To smarty pants. To move it, that you don't want to go too heavy or else you're... No, no, you're, you're, you're losing... You're Ruthie, wasting horsepower. Ruthie, you're absolutely 100% on that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. Yeah. So, yeah. Ralph, can you come aboard more often? Yeah, working on building the drive line for the boat since we're going with the UV shaft or UV since we're going with the U-joint <laughs> not CV joint U joint <laughs> the U-joint <laughs> shaft um, and I was talking to Rolf about it because he built race cars so of course he knows about that kind of stuff and he's like just call drive line service you know just call on and tell them what you're doing and they'll tell you oh yeah you need this and this and this and it's not really that big of a deal and it's really easy we'll build you a drive line you know and uh, I'm just like be that easy and just like sitting on the computer just like melting my brain for hours trying to research all these bits and pieces and uh i'm about like i'm sitting here like okay found all these various 
obscure parts from different websites and I'm like bookmarking them like I get ordered this part from here this part from there you know shipping for everything blah 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 and I'm like you know what I've always intended to just take Rolf's advice and call a driveline service I just called him talked to this guy and just like Rolf he's like oh yeah so you're probably looking at this you know for that seems like pretty standard flange and you know, uh, that's we'll put that on that end. We'll put that on that end. We'll build you a drive line. You know, it's really not that big big of a deal. It's really easy. We'll give we'll build you plenty of plenty of drive line for that size boat. And it's like, well, shit. <laughs> 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 Could have saved myself like hours of mental turmoil. <laughs> he gave me a ballpark quote, and it's I mean, it's honestly probably be cheaper than building it ourselves, which I yeah. thought was going to be the cheapest way. Um, but he said to build the custom drive line or the, you know, the shaft itself, we're looking at like the $400 range. Okay. Um, and then for the, uh, um, he's got to find us an inch and a quarter round bore, uh, yoke for the shaft. Um, and he said that part will probably run us in between like 50 and $70. Um, cause it's kind of a, um, it's a different part. You know, more specialty um, so all in all we might be looking 500 like five, less six hundred dollars at yeah. the most or something like that which, nice i mean that's still going to end up cheaper than building it ourselves so and we know that it's built right so while we wait for the drive line back to the interior we went over to tiffany and tyler's boat and we took a bunch of measurements. Maybe the most helpful thing is to look at a finished boat to get some hard numbers down. Peggy G is an Aries 32, a round bilge double ender, making her smaller than Red Aviva, but since we are hard chine, our interior space is comparable. It was extremely helpful to see the minimum space needed for things like walkways, tables, and seating. So I don't know how long we've been in here. And Garrett's been in here longer than I have. But we talked about a bunch of different options and I think we might have concluded more or less on what we've decided to do on, on the interior. And I think surprisingly to both of us, it's sort of an expansion on what the temporary interior was before. So let's see if Garrett's willing to explain to us what the idea is. I feel like this is like the 50th time we've done this. This is definitely the fit. This is probably the 55th time that we've done this. <laughs> but it can just be real quick, just a synopsis of the new conclusion. Because then head, head, corner, dinette, here, longer dinette fits four people. Galley, long counter, galley, oven, counter space, workspace. This area, so part of this will be where the dinette seating is, and then it'll step up, and this will be a countertop. This is where the sink's gonna be. Behind you, the long galley, we're thinking maybe drop it down. Have a spot here where uh, the 12 volt like, bridge box will be. And then here, a quarter that tucks under, and then here, have uh, a nice big loungy couch that can convert to a big double bunk. Whew, decision made. Good morning. Getting in the zone for interior stuff. I think some bulkheads are gonna go in today. Is that right? Um, yeah, I'm gonna try to get bulkheads in. Um, <laughs> what was that? <laughs> I'm gonna try to get some bulkheads in. Okay. And uh, see how far I can get. Um, I'd really like to get started on the stuff that goes over the motor. Mm -hmm. um, which will be a little more complicated because it all has to be separated 
here so that this whole portion can come off so we can work on the motor. At least that's how I envision it right now. I'll just see what the stock of plywood is like. We've got, I think, five sheets up there. Those are kind of reserved for the bulkheads. That's why we put them in the boat before we put the cabin on, so that we'd have um, full sheets of plywood and we could just cut them in here and fit them so that we can have full bulkheads so we don't have to cut them in half to fit them through the companion way. I really wanted to do this when we got the original documentation for the boat, um, but Red Aviva is now two years old. Officially, well, that doesn't help. <laughs> Kinda. Well, now you get to see the front and back all at the same time. We had to document the boat originally before we trucked, so I think it was November year before last. Let's see, what other cool updates do we have? Cold. Besides you being cold, <laughs> you're gonna have to get over it. <laughs> get more jackets. Um, boat's been in the water. I think today is week four, so and she yeah, doesn't leak anymore. It was a Monday, yeah. So and pretty much last week, last Monday, we had a couple tiny little corners, like in two of the frame bays, no bigger than you know a tennis ball size or something like that. I'm attempting. <laughs> to move all of our stuff that we've been storing on top of the bed to hopefully get it all to fit underneath the bed so that we can start accessing these sheets of plywood because Garrett's gonna start putting bulkheads in the interior. So Garrett right now is up in the garage, up at the house, cutting uh, long strips of plywood out of some old stuff that was from the temporary interior that will allow us to make some templates for the bulkheads, and bulkheads will be first. We'll kind of get a feel of how things kind of flow in here. And, uh, and hopefully we like it. We're both getting pretty drained talking about interior stuff, and it's kind of been hard to film because every morning we come back down here and talk, and late in the evening Garrett's just sitting in here by himself staring. <laughs> and feels like every morning, you know, another interior idea gets thrown out and another one gets brought in. I don't know about you, but we're tired of talking. Let's start doing. Everything that you see is going to end here. Uh -huh. So back here, um, I'm just going to put a big block down there and then secure it. Screw it from the back side a bunch. And then that'll tie those pieces together. And that's just going to be behind storage and stuff anyway. Mm -hmm. So you won't see it.
template to plywood, the interior is taking shape. We have one seat of the dinette framed in and one wall of the head, which is our only full-length bulkhead. Our focus for the winter months is below deck. Priority number one is to get the Wester Beastie up and running, but while we wait for the driveline, we'll keep chipping away at the interior. Up next, we're securing the engine and installing our new engine mounts. Run a bolt all the way through. And then we get our drive line. That's ridiculous. Ridiculously awesome. Oh my goodness. Whoa. I have to install a thrust bearing to actually run the motor have it usable, I need to install the fuel tank, run the lines, primary fuel filter, pedestal for the controls, and then I need to run the cables, electronics, and I need to have and install a battery. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> 